here on VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. Cashing Out continues here with me, Joe Serralo, and our guy, Tony Cotillo, joining us on the Progressive Guest Line with his DFS plays of the upcoming Week 12 right there in the last segment. Let's get to some Thursday night props. Tony, it looks like this uh, this crazy weather report isn't alarming you too much. Got some offensive overs you're rocking with here. Let's start with a quarterback who you like to go over his posted total. What do you got for us, Tony? Oh, man, Jameis Winston. Listen, I know the weather is going to be crazy no matter what, but this number was really low. Now, I will tell you that this is a number that was on FanDuel earlier, uh, two over 204 and a half. If you go on DraftKings right now, it's already up to 215 and a half. So I got it really, really low. And the reason why I like it is this is a guy who's averaging over 308 his, you know, his last three starts, and he's getting 43 attempts last three games. Even against a good defense, Jameis Winston is going to sling it no matter what. So I don't think even in bad weather, a Russ's number I think is like 179, 180 at one point. So 204 to me is is very, very attainable. Yeah, best number I'm seeing out there right now. That was earlier in the day. That was over at FanDuel. Now I'm seeing uh, 209 and a half floating around okay. at a couple shops as the best yeah. number. I mean, hey. Up. I think it'll start going up even higher. Yeah, I, I mean, look, you know, like you said, he's averaging over 300. He's coming off a damn near 400-yard performance. It just all comes down to those 15-mile-per-hour wins, 90% chance of precipitation. That's going to be you know, what separates the, uh, what differentiates the game plan for each offense in this one. But if Winston does have some success in the air, who are you rocking with to go over on his receiving yards that you think Winston will, uh, that'll be the beneficiary of Winston airing it out? Yeah. And and this is another low number, right? So, you know, even, you know, with bad weather, I looked at these numbers and the value with a guy like Jerry Judy, who's shown to be basically his number one guy, him and Elijah Moore, only one target away since Winston has been in in place, which 30 for Judy, 29 for Elijah Moore. Uh, So this has technically been his go-to guy because he's got 15 yards per carry, but the over is only 41 and a half. Like I, you know, and for me, a guy who's going to get five to seven to 10 targets, I mean, you, you don't need months for Jerry Judy to get you 40, 41 and a half. And this is another number, Joe, that I think has gone up since we've been on the show, I think it might be up as, as far as 45 or 46 right now as well. Yeah, that one's sitting there. I'm seeing 43, 44 and a half. Uh, pretty widely available on Judy. Not as much movement there as the Winston number. For a guy who's gone over, I mean, his, his total, honestly, Tony, what I like about this play, not that different from his total each of the last three games. You look at Baltimore, 48 and a half. Chargers, 49 and a half. Saints, 45 and a half. He's gone for 73 or more in all three of those games. So that this one, um, the disparity there, not as big as obviously the Winston numbers that we're seeing. I like the Judy play. How about on the Pittsburgh side? Who do you like to go over his astronomically low receiving yeah. yards, Mark? Yeah, this, this, this is another one that really stifled me when I was looking at these numbers. And I'm like, you know, uh, uh, Najee Harris over seven and a half. And I, I've seen it as high as nine and a half, and I would even go with the nine and a half. Like, this is a guy, seven games, he's hit the over on this number. And, you know, he's only gone one game this year without a catch. And one thing's for sure, Russell Wilson is the master of the checkdowns. And if it's going to rain, if it's going to be windy, it's going to be nasty, who better to throw the ball than to the running back or the tight end? So uh, I, I love this. He could get this in one catch. He really could. Yeah, and also, speaking of one catch, his receptions total currently at one and a half. Even odds, plus uh, plus 100 to the over one and a half. I mean, he's gone for two or more catches in six of his last eight games. I think Najee Harris receiving props might be a really good way to go, whether it is yards, whether it is uh, over one and a half catches. I mean, he's cleared both in six of his last eight contests i love it man how about uh how about a play out of the cleveland backfield what do you like there yeah let's go to the other side of the ball let's go with jerome ford you know his over four and a half attempts for rushing that's the only he had five last week right if you look at the two weeks before that not a lot but here's the thing i look at this a little differently and i look at it just no analytics 
just with the physical mindset of it's a short week. You have Nick Chubb, who's the older back, still not 100%, coming back from a, an unbelievable knee injury, right? Which means more runs in bad weather for the secondary running back. So I feel like this is an opportunity for Ford to get like 7 to 10 in this game. So this being under 5 to me was something I had to pounce on. Yeah, Tony, on this, I could not agree with you more on this play right here. I, I know he went, you know, four straight games under this mark. Two of them, he had two carries. Two of them, he didn't even play. Uh, so wow. he hadn't gone over this carries mark since back on October the 6th against Washington, and he had nine for 47. But he got five in a dome. Now, to your point, bad weather, a running back with an injury history. I think Ford should absolutely pick up a little bit on that platoon roll in this game. And now this is a play I love. I alluded to it with the bad weather, some sloppy play, maybe a defensive prop. Who do you like to go over on his tackles in this one? Oh, man, I'm going to go Devin Bush. Over five and a half. Again, this is total tackles. Tackles plus assists. He has 16 in the last two weeks. And his biggest games come from teams who like to run the ball, which obviously Pittsburgh does well. And in bad weather, that's just a, a double positive for us. And again, Russell Wilson, we know this. He throws a ton of underneath passes and checkdowns. So if he's going to do that, who's going to make the play? It's going to be either that weak side or strong side linebacker. So give me Devin Bush over five and a half total tackles in this game as well. I love it. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot, a lot of short gains, not a lot of big plays. Tackles are going to be through the roof. Targeting on a, a, an inside backer like Bush, those are the guys that usually rack him up. He could have a 12-tackle game in this one. I love the over five and a half. Tony, Pittsburgh is typically not a team people rush to bet when they're a, a road favorite. Home dog, I'll bet him blindly. Road favorite, a little different. This Cleveland team is bad, though. Pittsburgh historically owns the Browns. Doesn't matter if it's in Pittsburgh or if it's in Cleveland. These cities are a quick 90-minute drive apart. Sloppy weather, I think it plays into the Steelers' defense. Would you lay the three and a half here, or are you looking at this weather report saying, give me the home dog on a short week? No, man, I'll lay the points, man. Listen, the one thing that Cleveland always had going for them is they had a stellar defense. Last three weeks, they've given up the most points in the National Football League at 91. So wow. this, so you look at that, and it, they're weak in defense right now. So I look at this no matter what. This team in Pittsburgh is rolling, and they just went on a week where they won for field goals. They, you know, they they won multiple games on Chris Boswell's leg. So I like I like this that them at least win by a touchdown. I think they're going to win by double digits. I really do. <clears throat> Tony, uh, do you think that this game stays under? 36 and a half, or I know you got a lot of offensive overs you were giving out. What do you think the scoring does in this game? This is going to be interesting because whenever we think it's going to go under and we talk about the weather, we talk about the short week, it, it, it gives us some fireworks. It, you know, I, I'm actually going to say it's going to go over. I think we're going to hit 40. Ooh. I really do. Just when you have a guy like Jameis who's going to throw the ball 40 to 45 times, I don't care if it's a tornado, this dude is slinging the ball. So there's going to be opportunities, whether it be going ahead, whether it be in garbage time, doesn't matter. And Ross can still cook no matter what. So I, I do. I think this is going to go over. I really do. Tony, you know, we were talking about it in the last segment for a little bit. I was saying that this is a, a really weird board. I'll call it a bad board. I don't, I don't really love the slate of games this week. And it's alarming to me. I mentioned it when we were talking about Denver and the Raiders, how many favorites I like, especially road favorites. Man, where do we go in this one? Is there a dog that appeals to you? I, I know Thursday nights have gone to the home teams lately, so I figured maybe the Browns is a home dog, but I just can't trust them against Pittsburgh. Is there an underdog anywhere on this board that stands out? Oh, man. This is, you know, I, <laughs> I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get killed for this, right? <laughs> but one of these weeks, I'm just afraid that this Philadelphia Eagles team that I love so much yeah. is going to throw up a stinker. And if anybody can throw that offense out there to kind of go up against Vic Fangio, it's Sean McVay. So, you know, you know, traveling, going away, I, you know, again, I know they're not a home dog. I mean, they are a home dog, but, I, you know, maybe not what everybody thinks, but I, I kind of like the Rams a little bit in this for an upset. You know, were... Tony, when I first saw that number that was three, now it's two and a half in some spots. I was like, yeah. is this too good to be true? You got to lay the three with Philly. 
And if we're just looking at personnel, yeah, it's too good to be true. The Eagles have as talented a roster as exists in the National Football League. But man, you put Sean McVay on the Eagles, and they're a candidate to go 17-0 and if you have him running the show. You know, maybe a Super Bowl favorite. But McVay versus Sirianni, no matter how much Philly has a talent advantage between the sidelines, it's just so hard to go against McVay. I actually, I, I agree with your thought process there 100%. Matt Stafford playing his butt off too, man. Veteran quarterback. Yeah, he definitely is. He could have given up on the season early. He's refused to do so. Tony, thanks so much for the time, man. Looking forward to more DFS winners on the weekend to come. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me, buddy.